Hello everyone, today we are diving into an exciting project creating chatbot copilot with internet access. Imagine having a virtual assistant by your side equipped with the latest information directly from the web. So it would be ensuring the real-time updates and the improved accuracy in every interaction. Also, it will reduce significantly the large language model hallucination for sure. So before we delve into the coding part behind this bot, I have prepared a short trailer that gives you a sneak peek into the capability of this chatbot copilot. So trust me, you don't want to miss it. Enjoy the trailer and I will see you after that. Welcome back again, I hope you liked the trailer. So without further ado, let's start directly with the resources we have. So the first thing is a blog post I have created on my blog, Late Night Coding, containing all these steps. So that's the first thing we have. Uh, the second thing I have prepared a notebook containing all the uh, code we need, uh, starting from uh, importing the libraries into generating the content we need. Also, I have prepared a GitHub repository that contains the application.py. You will need to deploy your uh, chatbot on Streamlit to have something like this with this beautiful interface uh, and ready to, you can share it with your friends and you can test it. And it, it's a good, I think it's a good project for you as a beginner in LLM to have a like, uh, uh, a whole pipeline from starting coding into the deployment of it. So let's uh, test this platform. Let me get to my keyboard. I have the, this question. It's related to the NVIDIA Blackwell AI chip. Uh, it's uh, very new. Uh, for those of you who doesn't know or don't have any idea about Blackwell, let me show you. It's an NVIDIA, Bla it's an NVIDIA new AI chip which is uh, arrives to power new era of computing. Basically, that's it. It's uh, it have three days, four days ago where they uh, announced it. So going back to our the to our assistant, the answer, it should be like that. You see that the chip specifics, then the performance, then the platform capability. And always at the uh, end of the answer, it will gives you the links uh, or the references the the chatbot used to give us this answer. So for example, if you go to this one, we will see its uh, blog post and the blog is four days ago. So it should be related, no hallucination, and the information is up to date. The other one, let's see the other one, it's directly from the NVIDIA website. And also it's, uh, that's five days ago. Okay, so we have our answers. And let's start. So for this, we are going to use uh, the uh, Google API key, which is a good way to you to uh, save it here in the secrets of the Google Collab. If you are working on Google Collab, of course, or uh, if you are working on the, uh, if you are prefer to work on the uh, Visual Studio, you can save it on the .env file. So to get that, as I showed before, you need to go to uh, aistudio.google.com and you all you have to do is to click get API key and to create an API key. It will generate an API key for you and you have to be connected with your Gmail account, of course. Okay, so once you have your API key, you can save it here as your Google API key. Then we can start. So uh, as I mentioned before, the advantage of this is to access the real-time information by connecting to the internet. We will access the most up-to-date information available provided uh, providing users with the latest news, trends, and development. And the second advantage is the improved accuracy. 
by uh, considering the most recent information available. We are making sure here that there is no hallucinations and the information is directly from the source. Third advantage, and the most important one, I guess, is to reduce the bias. So sometimes when we are looking for a topic that uh, has some propaganda around it, especially in the, uh, let's say, political uh, or something related to politics, we will find diverse and uh, variety of perspective around it. So uh, by getting the information from different websites, we will get all those opinions and we will let the large language model uh, create the digest covering all those perspectives. So we will help to mitigate bias by exposing the large language models to a variety of perspectives and opinions. Okay, so, so with that being said, let's start. The first thing I want to show you is to is we are going to use the uh, DuckDuckGo API to retrieve the uh, information from the browser. So the DuckDuckGo is a web search engine, but there is also a Python library for it. You can install it fairly easy here, and it's well documented and maintained. Okay, so let me show you how we use that. The first thing we can use it with LangChain using a wrapper where we can choose the region, the time, and the max results for the website we can retrieve. And uh, uh, for example, here I used to, what's the OpenAI Sora model. And as you can see, OpenAI Sora model enables users to create realistic. So th those are the information from the website. Okay, the snippet contains the text and the link. Okay, uh, other than that, you can use directly the API, which is the method I prefer. Uh, so here we are going to create this function where we can re uh, return uh, the title, the body, and the link. Okay, so using this function, for example, if we ask what is the OpenAI Sora model, we are getting the title from which the information here saved under the body key is retrieved. And that's the link. If you can, if we click it, we can see that it's blog post talking about that. Uh, this is the second one, and this is the third retrieved information. As you can see here, the max result, I set it to three. Okay, and uh, yeah, and yeah, so that's the function, which is ddgs, duck, duck, go search. Okay, so we can parse the output and we can see the data retrieved. So this is basically here the same function. Uh, with the max result equal to, I created the function where we can give it the query, which is the question or the topic we need to search, look for on the internet, and the max result is set to two. Okay, so that's the function we are going to use. And the chatbot using, uh, and now we have this part here. Okay, let me go back to this. So we have the user query, we have this part here, the web search, we set it up. So wh whenever we have the question, we can give the context to the large language model. The complete idea is that the user will ask a question the, uh, to our application, of course. Our application will send this question to the DuckDuckGo using the DDGS uh, uh, function that we already created. Then we are also sending the question to the Gemini and asking him to generate answer depending on this context only. And and then the answer will be sent directly to the application and then the user, okay? So going back to the notebook, uh, let's go to this part with when we are going to use the Google Gemini. The first thing is to import the Gen AI, then to pass your Google API key, connect and choose your model. So uh, in my previous video, I talked about all the model that we can use from using one single API key from Google like the Gemini Pro I'm using right here. There is, there is also the Gemini Pro vision for uh, treating the images. And there is also an embedding models and other chat models. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to show you that uh, when I asked the uh, Gemini model, what is Sora model, which is an open AI uh, large language model created to generate images based on text, text to video, not images, sorry, to generate videos based on text, the Gemini Pro failed to answer me and gave me some self-organized routine algorithm. It's an acronym for Sora. It's a hallucination, I guess. After that, let me show you what's the result after giving it the context retrieved by our function using the DuckDuckGo API. So the first thing we are going to do is the Gemini generation. 
uh, this function will take a request and a context. Okay, so the context is basically the information retrieved from the inf from the internet, and the request is our question or the user question. So, and there is a prompt here which is saying that your main task is to respond to the request using the context provided. The context is indicated with the tag context and the request is indicated with the tag request and also here we are saying if the context doesn't have relevant information about the request or if the request is a basic and very simple one you can then respond using your own knowledge for example if we are saying hello and or what's one plus one or how are you you don't need to go to the internet looking for information to answer those simple questions okay so and we are giving it uh, t we are setting the temperature at 0 0.1 to give a precise answer no more creativity for the large language model we don't need that and the second one is the gemini digest so as i said we are get we are going to get two different uh, response from the internet as i showed as i show you here guys for example what is python we are going to get the first one as i said we set the maximum result to two so we are getting the first two ones okay the first two answers for this, we are going to treat each uh, context retrieved independently. Okay, so for each context, we are going to generate an answer for it. And then in this one, we are going to get all those answers and we are going to create a digest and uh, in a bullet point showing all the uh, information we, can ret we, we retrieved. So here, your task is to generate a text summary based on the provided data to complete this task successfully and to follow those, these steps. The first one is to generate separate summary for each text in the provided list indicated with the tag list of context. The second one is to understand the context of each summary and generate separate summary. The third one and the, uh, the final summary must be in a, uh, the final summary must be in a bullet points. Add a title for each bullet point. Uh, titles must be uh, from the provided list indicated with the tag list of titles. Uh, generate a good title for these complete and unified summary. Make sure that the output is clear and easy to read. Okay, so the result we can see it here that we are always having a NVIDIA Blackwell AI chip. That's the title. And for each uh, information, we created a bullet point from the different information we get from those websites. We create bullet points for the major information describing what we have here. Okay. Uh, let's wrap it all in one function so first we are going to create this function that will retrieve the data and then we are going to use the response uh, gemini generation and also the gemini digest and finally uh, as you may see we have here the reference part this is not generated by ai because if we give this to the ai to generate it may be some like uh, because the link is something that we don't need the AI to generate or to touch. So I created this part independently, as you, as you can see here. The digest equals summary dot text plus the reference plus join the reference. So the ref here is the uh, parsing the uh, list that contains all the reference retrieved from the DuckDuckGo function. Okay. So here we can see that, for example, if we ask him again, if we ask the Gemini again, what is Sora model? The same question that we asked him before and he failed to answer. Now the answer is pretty much better. Uh, Sora OpenAI text to video model. What is Sora? Sora is generative text to, to video AI, blah, blah, blah. What is, uh, how does Sora work? And it will give you also the links. Okay, so that's basically all you need to do for this part. And we have from our question, we have our answer well defined and well structured. Now, before moving out to deploy the application on Streamlit, there is something that I need to mention. So I have the same notebook on the local Visual Studio. So here I have these future improvements. You can take it as a, a task to do, guys. So for example, I, uh, as I said, I mentioned that for basic questions like hello and what's one plus one and stuff like that, what's the capital of Tunisia, you don't need to look for the internet if you already know the information, okay? So here, the, as you can see, the prompt didn't work as we need and it goes to the internet and uh, you see greeting and salutation, formal greetings, in, informal greetings, song about saying hello, and here's are the references. So that's what we don't need to see. So if we need to tell him hello, I need, we need the chatbot to say hello, how can I assist you? 
So to make him like a complete chatbot using the conversational capability of Gemini and also based on the internet when uh, it needs to be used. When the Gemini doesn't know how to you to answer the question, we need to activate the internet. So that's the part I want you guys to, to do because as you can see, the prompt is not doing well. Okay, so since we are here in the local, as I said, there is the uh, application.py, which is a Python script responsible for the Streamlit application. Okay, so we can deploy it locally and test it. And also we can deploy it on their community, on the Streamlit community. Let me show you here. This Streamlit community app or something like that. So you can go create, uh, create your account, new application, and you create your uh, application here based on that script but you need to put all the code in your uh, github and make it public you can fork this github and based on it you can create or deploy your own application it's very easy to do you can follow the tutorials that streamlit is providing read the documentation and everything is clear one thing i need to mention that when you go to when you need to pass the dot env there is uh, toml files you need to put all your credentials there and from that the streamlit app will read the credentials because you don't need to put your .env credentials on github also there is the chatbot.py this is a python script where we put all where we put all the uh, snippets from the uh, from the notebook on this script because we need this script to deploy our application okay so uh, thank you guys for watching and as I said you will have all the information you need and all the documents all the code very uh, organized here in the uh, repository and also you can find the well created blog post with all the resources you need and uh, I need to mention that uh, I worked on this project with my brother Hamza uh, you can take a look at his blog here on connect with him on linkedin connect with me on linkedin if you have any other questions or if you want to just connect and for other projects you can visit my github or my youtube channel and thank you very much and see you in another tutorial bye bye